Ooh. I was watching Germany and I don't even remember who. Right. And in the in between, there's a music interlude, they call it. Yeah. The music interlude. Right. I, there's two boogie woogie guys. Yeah. <laughs> early rock and roll. Right. You know, and then because I learned classical. So I watched watch it. Where's the sheet? Where's you know yeah. Singaporeans like score you know, sheet? Where's yeah. the paper? How yeah, yeah, come yeah. the paper? Yeah. You know, they were just expressing yeah. themselves. I said, yeah. what the hell is this? <laughs> All right, everybody, you know, let me just tell you something. This episode, right? This episode, let me tell you. This man, my guest in the studio, told me that he's going to be coming with that cap of his, <laughs> which I completely disagree. I'm glad he didn't, but I've got mine on, as you can see. You can see this one here. Yeah. Uh, this, this is the actual red of the Premier League. The- <laughs> <laughs> some some clubs like just <laughs> some clubs just like to go you know well let's go Reds come on go Reds I say fuck that you're not uh, red <laughs> yeah, it's uh, more like chili <laughs> this is red okay. and I am glad that he didn't come looking like a scouser today oh my goodness gracious me because if he did this gentleman let me tell you before we pan the camera to him <laughs> If he did, I would have said so many things. <laughs> well, you know, it's no, just, uh... no, man. If you did, I would have said, I would have said, <laughs> dude, why did the chicken cross the road? I mean, because thank goodness it didn't, because in the end, then we can say this very safely. The chicken that crossed the road, I am Bren. I am Bren. But no, thankfully he didn't come with that cap on his head. Though I know his allegiance is towards that that <laughs> club that I will not <laughs> expand anymore. But at least he came and he crossed the road looking like Danny Lung and the chief cajons <laughs> of the Timber Group. Welcome to the studio, Thank man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, um, I've been a lifelong Liverpool. Oh man, man bad word. Uh, what I will say is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm on that side that respect good football. So, uh, you know, obviously uh, arch enemy and everything, but, but also respect. Also respect. Okay. So. Okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> I'll give you that much. I've always said that. I've always said that. No, 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 no. Let me, let me get it straight, man. Let me get it straight. I've always said that. There's got to be some decent respect for each other. Of course. Right? It just so happens that I don't get much of that from a lot of scousers, though. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for saying it. I got to say, so I'm going to ask you this question. Before we go into, you know, deep and dirty into the stuff I really want to ask you. Mm-hmm. But I just want to ask you this. Since mm-hmm. we're on this topic, right? Do you think you guys, your club, will win the EPL this year? Um, I know. Looking at the last three to four years, I don't think anyone should predict. But, but uh, I'm very hopeful. Uh, you know, Klopp has announced. <laughs> uh, perhaps that has given a little bit more. Uh, you know, that energy that's required to continue. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm happy with how the club's going. I mean, you know, even without uh, Salah and, and and major guys, you know, they're doing well. Um, but I'm gonna stop at that because you know that becomes a different show. <laughs> No, it's cool, man. Yeah. It's a podcast. I, I, I mean, I, I'm in a Manchester United fan, uh, so, uh, home of a Manchester well, United fan. I don't know what to, the, to expect. I don't know. Yeah, welcome to the mini theater of dreams, man. Come on, death traps. Yeah. So, uh, welcome, but, uh, welcome to the mini old traffic here, man. Yeah, Come on, man. But, but yeah, I, I'm, I, I don't know, but I'm hopeful. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to make a trip down. Uh, Probably for the Liverpool Spurs game. You gotta be careful we made that yeah. trip down, you know, because you know it's a plane going comes down to landing and it's that part of the country, you know, <laughs> and all the chimney stacks that out part. and all the smog <laughs> and you know the pollution and stuff. Then hopefully the pilot can see the runway when right, it comes down. You're talking about Manchester, right? <laughs> no, I'm talking about I'm talking about the first industrial town well, in know, England. The last the last I remembered I landed in Manchester. <laughs> and it was a bit smoky. <laughs> It was a, it was a short uh, train ride to uh, to uh, Liverpool. Uh, you, uh. you you mistake the wonderful wonderful fog that comes in at certain times of the season in Manchester. You know the lovely lovely you mean view the blue, you from mean the, the blue ground. side from the ground. Oh, you mean you mean the shitty? <laughs> <laughs> if there's going to be any reason why, wow. if there's going to be any reason why, the cup goes to Anfield. 
is simply because Shitty has been kicked out of the freaking league. <laughs> okay. no, no, we'll see how we'll see. But what an exciting end, I think. You know, you want what Klopp leaving? For, no, I mean <laughs> Klopp leaving. I, I I wasn't surprised by the way. Everybody seems surprised, but I'm not surprised. He looks why, why, he looks, why, why, he looks why, tired. Why? He looks tired and. You know, I think I remembered there was one time when he was celebrating a, a goal mm-hmm. and then he kind of like started to pull half his hamstring. I don't even remember that. Was, I don't know if you watched the game. <laughs> of but, course I won't be but, watching okay. it. <laughs> but anyway, I just, uh, and he was like, you know, he was celebrating and I just felt like, oh, wow, this guy is, you know, he's he's so dedicated. Uh-huh. No one can say he's not dedicated. Okay. He's dedicated to the game. And, right. and, you know, I think his family and mm-hmm. health, and, you right, know, right. what's more important is health. Right, right, I'm, right. I'm quite sure wow, we can both wow. agree. I tell you, so many scouts are saying the same thing you're saying. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm going to end this conversation by just saying this. I'm going to have the final word in this one. I don't care, man. <laughs> well, I will just tell you, man. Tired? How many years? Nine years? Eight. Four trophies? Hang on. Alex Ferguson, man. Sir Alex Ferguson, man. 26 years and 38 trophies. Tired? Come on, dude. He's too old to be a snowflake. <laughs> uh, I mean, but, 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 I gotta tell you, of course, Ferguson did amazing, but, but, but it's, Thank it's you. it is a different, a different time, though. I mean, but nevertheless, we have to respect it. It's a different time. You're right. It is it's a, a diff- very it, different league. You know, uh, this is a great segue. And let me tell you why. Because if you say it's a different time, right? Yeah. You're right. Even the players back then, way back when, even for your club, yeah, mm. way back when they weren't snowflakes. Mm-mm. But today, yeah, yeah. for most clubs, most yeah, of these players are a bunch of snowflakes. It's money, man. It's all about the money. Yeah, exactly. So I, it's ridiculous, so, right? Yeah. Uh, how okay. many years have you been? Uh, have you been with Timber? Um, can I call? Can I call your organization Timber? Just Timber? Yeah, Timber Is that fine? Timber Group. Timber, okay, yeah. I don't want to disrespect That's fine. it. No, yeah. no, no. Uh, well, we started in two thousand five. Mm-hmm. So, so from two thousand five, we founded. Uh, you know, me and my partner founded the the you know the brand, and we started at Substation Garden. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you remember that? I'm sure. Yeah. Timber the Substation, and yeah. that's how it rolled. Uh, history. Then. So it's been what tw- 20, 2005. So, so 18, it's been eighteen, 18 years. years. Man. So you see, you've been at it with Timber I, I knew you for <laughs> eighteen years, man. You're no snowflake. Yeah, you see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. See what I'm saying? And for every hour that you open, right? It's like a trophy. Yeah. Correct? Nah, but, but you know, Klopp, Klopp is a bit of a, you know, he always says heavy metal, you know, football. No, no, I think he's just reached his time and he's probably thinking he can't probably go on. Whatever the reason it may, it may, may be something we don't know. We yeah, have to wait and see. Sure. It could be a health thing. I don't yeah, know. It could be Xabi Alonso make, making way for Xabi Alonso to come maybe, back. Maybe, maybe. And who, perish who the thought, you know, Mr. Banana Peel. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of candidates. I don't want to make any comments. Yeah, Mr. Banana Peel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by the way, I was there at that match, by the way. Oh, really? I don't want to bring that up. But, you know, <laughs> but I just did. So I'm just going to say it. And it was my honeymoon. Yeah. Chris, I'm, I'm so happy that you're laughing at me. But uh, I can't believe it. And it was like, what the, you know. Oh my gosh. He's but, a scouser. But, you know, hey. <laughs> that guy is another guy who's I respect. Yeah, but so. you but you know, I mean 18 years doing what you've been doing. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so funny that you've mentioned you brought up substation as well. Let me let me give you a little bit of unknown. Well, it is definitely unknown because mm-hmm. no one knows about this, with the exception of one or two other persons. When um when substation had an outlet, it was called Fat Frog, wasn't mm, it? That's before. Did you take off? Did you take over Fat Frog? No, no. The history was how it goes. Was that Fat Frog was there? Um, they had to tear down the National Library. Yeah, you yeah. remember that? Right? Yeah, yeah, I do. They had to tear down S eleven. Yeah, S eleven. Oh, I love it. Building up SMU. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So during that time, it was just impossible. I think you mm. know, anyone. Right. So they had to close it up for two to three years. Right. And during that time, there was nobody. There was nobody at the garden. Mm-hmm. It was so hard because it's all very dusty and yeah. you know. And the place was a little bit like, uh, you know, a war zone. Mm -hmm. Uh, We came in after that. So 2005, Mm -hmm. we started. So 2003, 2004, I don't think anyone was there. They were doing events. Right, right. But they were not having any FMB. You know why I brought this up? Do you know musician Bonnie, Bonnie Face D'Souza? Of course. course Okay. uh, (laughs) Bonnie and I were friends. Uh I used to, you know, for a short while, uh, Bonnie used to have private gigs outside. And I used to sing jazz and rock and roll mm-hmm. with his group of guys. Mm-hmm. And he told me, Chris, you know, we got to go to Fat Frog. I said, why? 
take a look at the venue, man. Wow. So, okay, we did. What do you think? We start a place here. Mm -hmm. We take over. Mm. It didn't happen. Of course not. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> and then when you guys started Timber mm. and we go, I went, fuck. <laughs> Shucks. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Look at what they've become. Shucks. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a, it was a challenging venue though. I mean, uh, we, were, we were, we were very blessed. I mean, we were very lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, good media coverage. Uh, you know, there's something about that place, but it's not, high traffic. Yeah, but it's very artsy. I mean, I loved it because yeah. it's such an artsy little, for some strange reason, you feel it there, don't, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's a bit, of the, you know, kind of like the underdog, a bit of the underground. Yeah, yeah, a bit so, underground. So yeah. it got that. Yeah. But it's not easy because you, it's a destination venue, right? Right. You wouldn't go there walking right, right hey, wait, what's the music? Mm -hmm. You would just go there because you know there's something happening there. But the, the thing about Danny Lung <coughs> is that Danny Lung is the quintessential musician. We're here to pay tribute to you oh. and tribute to you because not just because you're a muso for, for some time, but more so because you advocate music and musos. Oh. Okay. So thank you oh. for that. Um, uh, uh, it's my own little way of giving tribute on my tribute to SG music, uh, SG music icons. Mm. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. I've had gingerbread here. Mm. I've had, you know, and in the, in the, in the form of Anne Hussein and her husband, Jason Shahu, mm. the band leader. I've had uh, Leonard Rezel and together with Dudley Notice, right? Mm. So, and- Thanks for what, doing what you do. Um, I'm telling you, you. And I'm going to continue doing this in my own little way because, because musos mean a lot to me. Not just musos, man. Anyone who advocates music, yeah. radio DJs, worth their metal, mm. yeah? I have to make that quite clear um, because they are also contributory, co contributory to good music, you know, on the airwaves. Right. And I've had a few, I had William Xavier here uh, wow. and, mm -hmm. and Joe Augustine, who was formerly a, ra a radio presenter. Right. I had these guys here and John Klaus will be coming mm -hmm. soon as well. Mm -hmm. So this is my tribute show to guys like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Danny Lung, before becoming the head honcho, I call you the, the chief Cajones for Timber, for Timber Group, um, you were a full-time musician. Mm -hmm. Now, I knew that you played gigs um, even before you had a band. Mm -hmm. Piano on your own? No, no. We, I mean, on like, Fullerton? A lot more jamming. No, uh -huh. not, not, no, no, I never played Fullerton, but a lot of jamming. Uh, right. The old cra Crazy Elephant. Oh, uh, wow. The place called Down Under. I don't even remember Down no, Under. No, Down Under. No, crazy uh, Elephant, yeah. Uh, Orchard Meridian, mm -hmm. I think it was Orchard Meridian, and um, and a few clubs here that I mean, we support. Then you know Harry's Harry's Bar, yeah, yeah jazz, yeah. Uh, I I like jazz, you right. know, I like blues, jazz, soul, funk. So all those places I used to I used to go. Mm -hmm. Um, I only became a full time musician in Perth when I was studying there. Okay, I met my lead singer partner Trevor, mm -hmm. and that's how he started there. And when and, you were yeah. playing in Perth, yeah, you were there studying film. Yes, yes, media, yeah. Media, right? Yeah. In broad love, media. Yeah. And what's your first love, man? Media or music? Wow, hard one. I, I would say, I would say music first, always. But, uh, you know, I love, I love films. I, I absolutely love, you know, at that time, Pulp Fiction, you know, it mm. just came out, yeah. you know. Yeah. Of course, The Godfather, you know, the series, the, the, yeah. The tri trilogy. trilogy. Mm. A good fellas. You know, I'm a big <laughs> fan of the, of those. Like Reservoir know, Dogs and all. Exactly, exactly. Those were the, that was the period where films were like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. They, yeah. they, they it ran there, you the know. Scorsese. The Scorsese, yeah. Blood, Gore, yeah. but then very, very classly done. Yeah. Uh, even even Asian films, uh, Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. You know, mm -hmm. I I was such big fans mm. of art films, and right. and then I said, okay, since I you know music was not always a natural uh, something that people would say, oh, I want to be a musician. Mm -hmm. You know, in Singapore, especially if you talk race, mm -hmm. you talk about the Chinese culture, mm -hmm. music is kind of like the don't go there kind of thing. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> completely, are you mad? You know, <laughs> uh, why are you doing that? Are you hanging out with the wrong people? Are you hanging out too much in the void deck? What's going on? So, you know, my room had like, my, I mean, I used to be big fans of, uh, you know, Miles Davis. So I had Miles Davis. Yeah, and yeah. My mom, you know, who's a staunch Christian, yeah. <laughs> still is. And, and the whole family is Christian. But she used to come and say, what the? <laughs> All these black people on, on, my, on my son's wall. So I grew up kind of like, 
being quite lonely. What was the influence? What was the influence? Oh, you know, I, I mean, I was, it was, I, I, it was, it comes back to football, but nothing to do with Liverpool and Man okay, okay. This mind. was Just World Cup. Okay. And uh, during the, in the old days, uh-huh. they used to show this in Channel 5 uh, uh, and they used to show World Cup for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember right? that. Yeah, we, yeah. we are about the same age. Yeah, about so, the same age. Yeah. So they used to show free and yeah. it was like nine o'clock in the morning. Right. I was right. watching Germany and I don't even remember who. Right. And in the in between, there's a music interlude, they call it. Yeah. The music interlude. Right. I, there's two boogie woogie guys. Yeah. <laughs> early rock and roll. Right. You know, and then because I learned classical. So I watched, watch, watch say, where's the sheet? Where's, you know, yeah. Singaporeans like, you know, score sheet, yeah. where's the paper? How yeah, yeah, come yeah. the paper? Yeah. You know, they were just expressing yeah. themselves. I said, yeah. what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, all my life, I thought music have to learn the skills. Yeah, yeah. Have to, you know, be- You, you, you were learning piano then. I was then. learning yeah. piano a right. little bit. Yeah. And it's like, do these two guys just doing what they do and they just don't even have any, you know, reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I went to the record store. That's how my um, love for vinyl started. Okay. I went to uh, the old Funan, the very old Funan, Ooh. where they used to have Supreme, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, the record yeah, stores, yeah, Roxy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and then I went to the guy, I, I remember this, I was very young, 16 years old. Mm-hmm. I said, do you have any uh, black people music? <laughs> At that time, I, I, you know, I didn't know any better. So yeah, black people, you know, uh, some sounds like church, you know. I said, yeah. you know, sounds like church. church sounds like church. You know? and, uh, and then they gave, they brought out the yeah. vinyls. I bought yeah. a few. Yeah, and I went back to listen. Right, and then I taught myself uh, how to play boogie woogie piano. Wow, that's how it all started. Blues piano. Right, and Ray Charles, and then, right. you know, all those guys. BB King. BB King later. Okay. BB King later, but right. piano first. Yeah. And then because I was at church uh-huh. and there's always a piano there right. and I tried to bring it in, you know, yeah. and you know, that didn't, didn't, that work. didn't work. <laughs> well. I think, I think the pastor was saying, come on, let's have a chat. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to play Amazing Grace that way. You okay, know? But come on, man. <laughs> hey. Oh man, I would love it, man. Yeah, of course. Of course I would you would love you're rock, it, you're, man. You're a rock oh, and roll guy, right? Man. So, so that's how it started. And then yeah. after that, uh, I met a friend by the name of Beast. Mm-hmm. He used to work at Yamaha. Right. And I used to go to Yamaha and, you know, just hang out there, you know? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was a oddball, Chris. You must understand. Uh-huh. As a Chinese guy, 16 years old, imagine this, <laughs> listening to, you know, black people music yeah, and yeah, yeah. blues and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and boogie woogie. Yeah. And then Bees, this long hair metal guy, yeah. was like, Oh man, I like BB King too. So was he, he Chinese? Yeah, he's Chinese. Oh, he so, he, he kind of looks, Chinese, yeah. he is Chinese, but he right. kind of looks like he's, uh, 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 you know, Chinese version of a heavy metal guitar player. Okay. You can try to imagine long okay. man. Yeah. His name is Bees. Yeah. <laughs> you know, B-E-E-Z. <laughs> no, I'm not going to elaborate on that, but, <laughs> but then he was also a great guy, a gentle fella. And then uh-huh. I got started music lessons with him. Uh-huh. And then he, one day he just put a earbuds on me, on, on me, an old Walkman. Right. I said, listen to this one. And then that's where I first heard Eric Clapton. Mm-hmm. Have you ever loved a woman? Okay, which is the Derek and Domino's band. Okay, you know, he was part of it, and that was like, wow, what is this? You know, and then after, of course, you know, listen to Wonderful Tonight, Let It Be. This must have been in the eighties. Eighties, yeah. 86, I mean, I mean, I, 80, no, 80, 88 for you probably. For me, yes. Yeah, I was singing the blues, right. but then I started listening to Beatles. I said, uh-huh. and then 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 I discovered BB King. Yeah, and. Long and short of it, I met BB King finally, right. 1992, right. when he was in Singapore. Wow. Watched him live. I tell you, Chris, it, it, it wasn't any enlightening. And, uh, you know, when you see the Blues Brothers movie, yep, yep, when yep. there's a light coming, I said, oh, I'm on a mission from God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me. I, I was there <laughs> watching BB King. I was like, oh man, this is what I want to do. Uh huh. And the light shone on me. I said, wow. So there were no influences at all from the home? No. You're no, the first, no, you know. No, you're the first guy. No, let me tell you Done. why. Let me tell you why. My, my, okay, to, to be to be to be clear, my, right. my 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 dad loved CCR. Okay, loved Deep Purple, but right. you know it wasn't like he played guitar. So right. I kind of liked the music that he played. Right, uh, he played Abba and Bonnie M. Right, you know those days. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every time Christmas, you always hear yeah, you know yeah, by yeah. the rivers oh, of Babylon. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody's Beatle, <laughs> right? So that's all. But, right, but right. playing music. Mm. Being in church, mm. being Chinese, my mom's very Chinese. My mom's side is very Chinese. It's like, whoa, don't go there. You band boy, yeah. you band boy, yeah. mm. you know that kind of thing. Mm. So, so yeah, you're yeah, right. It didn't come from the home in that way. 
Right. In, in fact, it came from the home in the antithesis way. <laughs> right. I said, don't go there. <laughs> and you know me, when you say don't go there, I go there. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, hanging out with too many St. boys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was Absolutely, a bit, man. Was a bit like, you know. You know what we say? You know what we say? And I said this, I said this, did we have the 90th anniversary dinner recently? I, I saw Pets, that. And that was one of the MCs, You right? sang. I oh, sang, yeah, I sang. Yeah, yeah. Jamming the band. So, you know, that school of mine, I'm so proud of that school, um, easily said, so many great musos oh. and entertainers came out of that school. Oh. Um, and I don't know whether I can include myself in it, but never mind. The point is that also 90% of media include personalities. Yourself. Include yourself, Chris. Come on. <laughs> don't forget the KC girls were not doing badly too. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you're quite right. Same thing. Yeah. A lot of talented people. Yeah, a lot. Loads of them. And, um, you know, and, and 90% of media personalities in Singapore, you know, d- recent times come out of my school. And <laughs> funny enough, I actually said this uh, you know, on stage. So there's another version of our motto because our motto is protest revolt. It's protest oh, and revolt. <laughs> protest and revolt. Yeah, was- and, you know, and that's, 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 it's not because we are, it's not because we are rebels, you know. It's the very fact that we grew up not being passive. We speak our minds. You know what I mean? I, I am not one to hold back, man. I don't give a flying fuck. You know, I'll just say it as it is. Call a spade a spade, right? Um, and yeah, the musos that came out of that school. And the funny part is, like you, your folks, because you're Chinese, right? I'm half Chinese. My uh-huh. mom's Chinese. My, my mom, dad, not musos at all. Not just my sister. My sister writes pretty, very well. I think everyone knows who she is. <coughs> Excuse me. And, you know, um, myself included, along with all others that I've had on this show for this series. Musos, DJs, influence came from where? Home. You're the first mm. that's telling me, mm, not really. Not really, not really. There's yeah. some bit of it, but not really. Yeah, so it's, there's, there's a break now, you know? But it's, a lon- it's a very lonely uh, I'm pretty part. sure. I'm and pretty in a way, sure. it's yeah. helped me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Because I could focus. Mm. You know, without the distractions. <laughs> Seriously. Well, that's one way of looking you know, at it. It yeah. is. Because, you know, yeah. it's almost like, uh, how do I put it? I, I, you know, every time I go for Chinese New Year dinner, I dread yeah. it. I dread meeting relatives sometimes because right. they may not, may not fully understand where I'm yeah. coming from. <laughs> but, you know, and then they look at my mom and feel sorry for her. <laughs> you know, Ma, how come this one come out like that? It you sucks, know, huh? My, my daughter this, my son that, you yeah. know. And, in some ways, even at a young age, right. I felt like, okay, my my road is gonna be a little bit hard right. and challenging. Right. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go for it. And uh I, I don't wanna bring any football analogies into it, but the great football clubs of the world, they never <laughs> they never give up. <laughs> I include other football clubs, sure, not just, sure, you know, sure, they don't give sure. up. Okay. They don't give up, you okay. know? Okay. It's, so I have, I've always said, oh, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to stick to it. You right. know? But, but I couldn't really share a lot with, you know. People. With the family. No, I that, can't. Yeah. Even my friends. Right. They were at that time listening to Pet Shop Boys, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, me too. I, yeah. I mean, you know, they were listening to all those, uh, uh, you know. Pop, pop uh, music, yeah. Tiffany, Debbie Gibson, oh, gosh, you know, yeah, that, okay. that era, right? <laughs> OMD, my favorite band was OMD, Whoa. you know, uh, Erasure. Erasure, yeah, okay. All those my favorite bands, you right. know, and I used to listen to uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Oh my, relax, Remember man. Remember that, man? Relax. Two Tribes. Two Tribes, all <laughs> those good stuff. Yeah. But I always go back to the blues. Uh, something about it. It's something about the blues because remember I talked about B.B. King. Yeah. I remembered him in his shiny jacket. Right. He comes out, right? And everybody's like, wow, the shiny. And then he's, mm. Gibbs, uh, he's a Gibson. Gibson, Lucille, yeah. Right? yeah. His name, Lucille, he calls his guitar. Mm-hmm. And he's just saying, you know, I'm, I was I was just a, a young man from the fields, you know, in Mississippi. And he was telling this story. I was like, wow. Preach to me, man preached to me and for some reason I think the blues kind of represents I guess I mean if if African Americans can make it with music and art in a in a in a, in a society that was they, repressive you know, re, you know yeah. it was terrible yeah you know they, they, they never have a dream of yeah. being a lawyer whatever you know yeah and then they can come up and they wear a suit. And then yeah. when they wear a suit, they are on stage. They, 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 they take over the stage. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's the, that's the thing about music that I love. Yeah. 
I don't care who you are, yeah. how old you are. When you yeah. go on stage right. with that microphone, right? You're you're in charge. Yeah. Right. How you do, I don't know. Yeah. But you're in charge. Yeah. And that 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 blew me away because you know, um, you know, I've 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 loved the blues all as well, but also also African American church music, mm-hmm. gospel music. Gospel, yeah. Absolutely. These people went through a lot. Yeah. I can't even imagine what they went through, right? I mean, imagine Elvis. Elvis's influence also came mostly from black uh, gospel music, course, right? And the blues, Mississippi yeah. blues, yeah. Huh? and Memphis blues. Yeah. And then after that, he amalgamated everything into one little bluffly ball and called it rock and roll, man. Absolutely. You know, and, and he had his shit too mm-hmm. when he was coming up, right? I, I guess... <laughs> You're right. There's something about the blues. It is, it's the backbone of a lot of popular music anyway. It is. Yeah. It's it a is. backbone. And but anyway, how many instruments do you play? I know now piano, guitar. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, guitar, guitar is my favorite because something about the guitar, you know, <laughs> you, you, you know, something, it's like a, I don't call it a weapon. <laughs> so some people will call it a weapon. Like Jimi Hendrix would look at it as a, yeah. as a way of saying, hey, you know, yeah. Anti-war, etc. You know, yeah. with, the, with the guitar. But yeah. for me, it's it's just empowerment. Guitar is just an empowerment, mm-hmm. and uh, the piano to me is more of a supporting role. Right, I love it. it you know, Roy, Ray Charles is a great lead role. Yep, yep. but a lot of it is more supporting. Yep. I like that because I I, I kind of play the B three and mm-hmm. Rhodes mm-hmm. style, mm-hmm. a bit more of the old school style mm-hmm. with my band, and I'm mm-hmm. happy to support mm-hmm. on the back. But mm-hmm. when I play the guitar, I'm going in front. Yeah, yeah. There's something about the guitar, you right, know. It's right. a bit like the microphone. Yeah. You go, you, 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 you're gonna be in front, and you're gonna be, you're gonna be strutting, yeah, you're yeah. gonna be bending that yeah, string, yeah, right? Yeah. So I love yeah. both. I love both, but I, that's about it. I, I play a little bit, a little bit of harmonica because you know you're a blues fan. Mm-hmm. You but try. Who, where do you learn all this? Oh my, really? Bees taught me a little. B is my right, my right. first guitar and only guitar teacher. Right, <laughs> and I still remember going to his house, and he didn't at that time in those days there were like studios and all. So we played literally outside his house, mm-hmm. literally like a common corridor, <laughs> HDB, yeah, with a small M, yeah, and you know, and basically a lot of it is him, but most of it is really listening to BB King, Clapton. Mm. Uh, then later on, Rolling Stones, mm. you know, yeah. uh, Muddy Waters, wow. you know, all those cats, you know, and the British blues yeah. and the uh, and the American blues yeah. kind of intertwine. But it's so strange, man. As you said, you know, uh, back then, I mean, in the 80s, I don't really know many people who listen to the blues. Even back in school, the guys you and I both know who have been, who become really big names and musos in the industry in Singapore. They, these guys were playing jazz fusion. They were playing Shack Attack, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Cassiopeia, mm-hmm. right? Wow. Uh, and back, and, and uh, Shit Korea, mm-hmm. right? Spyrogyra. Uh, Spyrogyra. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. it. Yeah. So, you know, and, 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 and that already we found like, oh yeah, this is really going left field here. Uh, when everyone else was, was listening to, we were listening to Duran Duran, Spandau Ballet, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Depeche Mode, right? Level 42. Level 42. <laughs> uh, um, what was his name now? Mark, 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 King, Mark King. Mark King. Mark yeah. King. And, and, and we, and, 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 but your influence was more than just left field. It was something that people really don't go into, you know, at that age. Yeah, well, I mean, something about the blues and gospel music hit me. But when I was in Perth yeah. in 1996, yeah. uh, now that start that kind of started the fire. Okay, and it ev- eventually became from uh, my band U Blues. Yeah, I started a band called U yeah. Blues. It's short for Universal Blues. Right, but only because '96 was uh, Pauline Hanson. It's close to your name. Oh, I know, but, but not related in any way. S O N. But uh Pauline No, no, Hansen. same spelling. Same, oh, same spelling. spelling. Exactly oh, the same. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. But you know, he came she came about and and I, I had a bit of bad experience on the streets, uh Fremantle in Northbridge and all and that was the society changed a little bit yeah. in Australia. Yeah. Got a racist. But what, whatever that was underneath was yeah. coming out because yeah. uh, you know, a lady that looks like your auntie is talking in there like <laughs> Well, she says it, I can say it too. So I went through a few of those things mm. and, and that really hit home for me about the music. Right. Because initially, you know, you live in Singapore, you're part of the majority race, you, yeah. know, you know, really, you know, what, you know, but then when you are in Perth and you stand out on the street 
and you have people having negative views of you, yeah, you know, yeah. especially because pol- politically it's changing. Yeah. That's where I started to say, really got into deep into the history of the blues. Right. I, I, my my honest thesis, my honest year thesis was about universal blues, about the history of uh, racism, slavery yeah. to Australia from uh, the Asian uh, migration to Australia. Right. So I did a paper on that, and from that started my whole career in music because. Then I found, uh, then I met my lead singer, Trevor, right, right. and we started the band U Blues. Right. And eventually we came back to Singapore right. and we managed to tour quite a lot of the world. Yeah. Um, and uh, that really is the first driving force of eventually what Timber became. Because Timber is actually my expression of what I hope music brings people together. Okay. There's very few things in this world really that brings people together. Yeah. Right. Well, what's your opinion now? I mean, look. This is something I've always I've always brought up, yeah. and um, the state of music today in Singapore. What is your opinion of it? Um, You're right to say. Sorry to just interject no, for the man. I, I know I just asked a question, mm-hmm. but when way back when, when we were in our twenties and into our thirties, music was great here, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Okay, I say this to all my friends who've been on the show and I've given tribute to all of them. Music was great. We've got, we've had the likes of Dennis Fu, love the man, the Europa group, right? And no doubt, no doubt, brought in the Filipino, the Filipino bands into Singapore, the performers, and they were great. You know, I, I, I thought it was good for us. Why? Because this good to have competition, yeah. right? Mm. And we have had bands that, that grew up also, you know, under that pressure, right? Great bands that mm. came along, right? Uh, from the early 80s, late 70s even, you know, and all the way up throughout when you have the Class Acts album that came out, right? Heritage, Gingerbread, Gypsy, um, Speedway, um, K. Hamid, mm. Iskanda Ismail, mm. right? Hang Loose. Um, and, and the list can go on. And then after that, of course, you had Culture Shock that then Dougie went to Energy and then, you know, and John Kruger, you know. Um, and, and these guys, the bands of music started to grow and grow and grow and grow. There was a lot of space for that. Mm. A lot of space. The, and despite the fact that we have also had great Filipinos who performed here, right? Guys like Gino Sunga has not gone back to the mm. Philippines, right? Um, the boys. The boys. I oh the boys. my goodness! Some of gracious. the boys are still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. They, Gilbert. They Gilbert is still play, here. Yeah, they, they they do play at the. I have a new bar called Blackbird, and mm-hmm. um, they they you know some of them do play. Was Rene Hombre who's been there, done that with mm-hmm. the boys? Mm-hmm. I believe it was the boys under Dennis. Mm-hmm. Dennis. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's still, some of them are still around, and some of them became Singaporeans, married. You know. Yeah, married local. Local and, yeah. and have kids now. Yeah, like Gilbert. Yeah and, yeah, and I think, you know, it's, yeah, Gilbert is mm-hmm. one of them. Well, and, those uh, are, mm-hmm. and I think that, yeah, I think that uh, some of them just basically say, hey, you know, I'm going to make Singapore my home. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I mean, that's, you got to respect that. You yeah, know? I it's do. Like yeah. Stay here. Yeah, right? yeah, of course. Let the music stay, man. Yeah. You know, but today, mm. today, outside of Blackbird and outside of Timber, Timber yeah. okay? How's music, um, the state of music in your opinion here? Um, it's not as good as before. Mm-hmm. When I was uh, playing full time, mm-hmm. uh, started the year two thousand and two mm-hmm. right, in Singapore. Mm-hmm. I was very fortunate because at that time, as, as you say, there were fantastic clubs going. I mean, legendary clubs. Right. You have Crazy Elephant, Walla Walla. Yeah. You had you know um, uh, Swing. Mm. Oh, you, know, you yeah. had all this and all. Uh, we we started our career in Aubrey's. Aubrey's at uh, oh, Winsland. Oh my Wins, goodness Wins, me. Yeah. So that was name, well, I haven't first, heard a long time. First regular gig. Right. And I used to go to Fat Frog, watch Hanjin, and then now, because it's not that far. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually we had a regular gig at Aubrey's and then the, the Twin Towers fell. And then there was six months of no work because the economy just went yeah. nuts. Yeah. Uh, and then we got a gig at Swing. Right. And we stayed at Swing all the way to the end. Right. So it was very vibrant. Swing was amazing. Yeah, yeah. We used to go in there at three o'clock and there'd still be music. Yeah. And we'll be still playing. And musicals who end their shift. Yeah, they will go there. They go there and jam. 
Yeah. I mean, they're kind of, some of them are alcoholic. But anyway, that's, that's the point. <laughs> but uh, that's the only place open anyway. Yeah, uh, either yeah. you have a tea tari somewhere. Or, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. But it was a wonderful experience. Um, I think the difference from then to the, for now is that, you know, the focus on band music yeah. has just dropped yeah. dramatically. Right. So that's one reason. Right. It's something external that we can't fully control. I mean, technology, TikTok, everything is now more about the artists rather than the band. You know, in the old days, you had bands, Coldplay. You know, now right. they're playing, right? Yeah. I mean, U2, Coldplay, yeah. and all those bands, yeah. American bands, yeah. you know, Vertical Horizon, yeah. bands like that, right? Right. They were still bands. Mm-hmm. But now, when you think about bands, you don't think about, you know, you think, you don't, you think about names. Yeah. You think about artist names. Right. A lot of it is sort of, um, Taylor Swift. Uh, yeah. And then sequence music. Yeah. Because it's, it's cheaper. Yeah. So economics have changed the presentation somewhat. Young people may not see a four piece, five piece like we used to. Yeah. So in their minds, they say, oh, as long as you have a producer, you can have a singer and right. then, you know, save a lot of money yeah. and you still sell tickets. Right. You know what I mean? Like Ed Sheeran is a great example. Right. And, but he's different. He's saying, I, ask, I don't want to do a band. I'll just do a solo. Yeah. And he's done very well. So that, that's changed the mindset. The focus on bands like we used to know, yeah. just not there anymore. Uh, you know, our days, you have Oasis, you have bands like that, you know, yeah. you have Suede, you know, yeah. you know, all those bands. Yeah. Still kind of underground, but still quite strong. Right. Now you don't really think about it. But that's one reason. The other reason is also Singapore is a very young country. So English is not still a cultural uh, language for mm. us in a way. Mm. We 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 get a bit embarrassed when Singlish is played around and you know, it's topped around. I don't I don't I I, I love Singlish, but you know it's it's a bit of the dilemma. You know, are we uh, how are we speaking the language? Mm. You know, are we always reminded that are we speaking properly? Mm. You know, so in that kind of environment, you know, when you go to the States, the black guys don't care. Yeah. They they you can't even understand half a sentence, yeah, yeah. but they don't care. Yeah. They feel proud of what they're saying yeah. and then became hip hop and then it became yeah. new words are formed yeah. and they make millions of dollars. Yeah. Evolved. They evolved. But, yeah. but the thing is then the white people over there mm-hmm. think it's cool. Mm-hmm. New words are formed. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. that's creativity. Right. In a comfortable safe zone. Right. We don't actually have that here. Mm. What do you yeah. mean by comfortable safe zone? I mean, the, I mean, African-American hist- uh, for p- particularly African-American art forms. Mm-hmm. They have reached a point where they they don't feel embarrassed or shy. They are mainstream, right? You know what I mean. But it got to go there, right? Yeah. But what what is not safe and comfortable here in Singapore? I well, I, well, firstly because we are multi language, we are multi multilingual, yeah, uh, and we are young, right? You know, uh, where else they have been around for a long time yeah. and through very difficult circumstances. So you're saying we have an identity crisis? Sometimes I think I, I feel that way, and and you know. I just give you one example. Remember mm-hmm. the days where you had debates? Yep, yep, national you know, debates. The yeah. National debates yeah. in school debates. That's when I, we first saw Mr. Vivian, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan that's right. in uniform. That's right. So yeah. we used to have that culture yeah. where we could say, hey, I disagree with you. Mm-hmm. But these days, when you do that, it's online and it's all yeah. a bit, you know. You get called out. You yeah, got to woke people out people there. Out. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's, we, we, we can't have a, like me and you, mm-hmm. we come from a similar generation. We right. can have that kind of respectful right. debate. Right. Even though you're wearing a wrong... Uh, <laughs> no, it's not wrong. <laughs> it is very right. I'm just kidding. Like, but, you know, we can have that dialogue. Yeah. We can have that discussion. Yeah. And without feeling like we are being passive aggressive yeah, or, yeah, you know, an- yeah. anxiety. Open, open, frank, straight discussion. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Today so, you do this to someone else, just talking to them, they get offended just because you're talking to them. Correct. So, yeah. so that's why I think, and then of course the third reason would be mm. that, ah, how do I put this? I mean, how do we value our art? That's so important. You, mm. know, um, you know, in Japan, in New York, even though the buskers are, you know, they're just on the streets on Melbourne. Yeah. There is this culture of saying, hey, you know what? Good job, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Thank you very much. They're revered. You know? They're respected. Yeah, you know, even though you're, you yeah. know, you're so talented, my goodness, right. you should do this, you should do that. Right. You know, oh, wow, where can I buy your CD? Right. You know, and I, when I was in Perth, that's what happened. We right. sold out our CDs. We uh, we released an album and right. we sold out, uh, you know, within a, a, a three months, four months. Right. We did festivals and right. we're selling out. But, not so much here. You know. Here you go, like, like what's, it's the same thing. Ben Boy. 
Yeah. I like I like your your post. I like your Instagram, but that's enough. Yeah. How can it be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then they expect you to do shows for them free. Yeah. If not, they pay you 20 bucks. Yeah. yeah. You know, I had General Ling here, Elaine, yeah. uh, who's a beatboxer, right? Yeah. And she actually, she actually said on this show, right? And I gave tribute to her and her, her other half, uh, Z Loco, that, you know, she told me that, look, man, um, they offered to pay us 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. I said, what? You know, and it's sad because we are not valued. Musos and entertainers per se, somehow not valued. Mm -hmm. Society sees us, ah, these people, mm -hmm. you know, not educated enough. They can't get a proper job, yeah. you know, and they end up doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's really sad. Art, the arts and entertainment seem to have flown out the freaking proverbial window. You know, and, and um, I, I don't know. If you say safe place, a safe space, mm. it's the safe space can only happen when society starts to change the mindsets mm. about people in this profession. Mm. And I also lament about something else, which is something I want to ask you, because Timber, Timber, Timber Group started with core values that include this one particular one, and that is to value your musicians, mm. right? My I lament about the musicians of old that can, are still playing, can still play, they're still able, but no one is cherishing them. That is my problem. Mm. Something I don't like to see happen mm. because these guys... We were, everyone was young ones. You look good, sound great, but you get better. You see, that's one thing beautiful about music. As we age, right, we get better at it. More often than not, as long as our mental capacities and our physical abilities are still available, we get better at it. But these guys are largely forgotten. Mm. That was the first thing, first reason that compelled me to start this series. Okay. First reason, number one, society has got to change its mindset. And then of course, looking around and I hear, I've heard this from all my guests, bar owners, club owners, no longer hire. And they do, they hire two piece, three pieces. Um, and like you said, we don't see the big bands anymore, but again, in our context, in my my view, is that they don't want to pay one, two. Um, they don't want to try to get to the to the to the point where they have to pay for an entertainment license. Three, there are so many other mediums available where you can actually use digital stuff and play. They don't even hire DJs anymore. And I really think, man, uh, come on, you know. We have got, we have got to make our music scene a lot more vibrant. Acoustic isn't just a thing. It's also about can we afford it? Right? So that's how I see it. We are going down a drain. Mm. Then you have, well, in terms of recording artists. Well, yeah, we've got a couple of good ones, you know, in, in the last couple of years, right? But then now you see a lot more hip hop guys, a lot more rap. Right. But what happened to your conventional music? Uh, you have bands, no more bands. You're right. There's no more bands going out there, man. We're, we're looking at maybe a cappella groups, uh, but not bands. We're looking at solo singers, but not solo, solo artists, but not bands. The way I see it, if you don't, if the music scene don't stoke that fire, it's going to be like this. Mm. That's my point. And now with Timber Group, I mean, come on, man. Supersonic is amazing. Yeah. I had Afwan, yeah, he was yeah, here, yeah. right? Yeah, he great me. guy, yeah. The reason why I asked him, because he's current and worthy. Mm. Now, I'm a stickler, huh? Danny, let me just tell you, mm. yeah? Not everyone will be invited to the show, sure, sure. okay? Mm. You're here and thank you for being here. Afwan was here and, and that's because I really think highly of him, you know, and what he does and what, how, what, how he's, his band performs. 
I've, I've been to your, to, to Timber Plus, of course. I've watched him play. I go there because of them, right? Ben's great. You hardly find something like that anymore. So the, what I'm saying here is that, look, man, if bar owners, club owners don't stoke that fire, there can be no smoke. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. But um, anyone that tries to put a ban on a bar setting, mm-hmm. I, I firstly, I have to say I have full respect because um, I know how hard it is. I yeah. mean, how much can you pay for a beer? Right? Yeah. You know, how much more can you pay for a beer to have a band perform for you? Because don't forget, a lot of people don't realize, I want to be very clear here. A lot of these bands, whether it's a two-piece, four-piece, six-piece, to me, uh, well, of course it matters, but but more importantly, these people are, these musicians are paid. Yeah. And uh, I mean, obviously, I, I'm not saying everybody pays them, but I think most of the respectable uh, uh, companies pay. Um, so, that's the first thing. It's a it's an investment, right? Onto something that mm-hmm. can attract the footfall, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but that that has to also be be supported by the audience. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The audience have to come in mm-hmm. and support the musicians. How many times I've had situations when people ask me, "Hey, you pay the bands?" Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, still, <laughs> a lot of people don't know. So that's why I say here, right? It comes from a place of a respect. It comes from a place of changing mindsets. Yeah. But it, it also starts with them understanding a bit of the economics of it. You know, when you have a venue, like a venue that has, doesn't have a band and a venue that has a band, there's a, a cost difference. The, the venue that doesn't have a band will, char- will, pay, will, 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 will charge you uh, what, what X dollar for the beer, right. but no band. But right. what about the venues that do have a band? Then yep. there's, you know, sound engineer, right. stage, and right. then extra space for performance, right. less sitting. Which means your drinks are going to be charged yeah, more. Yeah, that's right. But, yeah. you know, that 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 has not really happened, you know. Um, partly because we come from a, com- a country that don't and don't believe in cover charge or don't practice cover charge. But, you, but wait, wait a second. Let me stop you there. Cover charge. Used to be that you in mean the old the, days. No, no more? A uh, long time no more. Really? You know, most places don't Where have Where the that. hell have I been? Yeah, you know, Zook used to have that, yeah. you know, $25, $30, yeah. $35. It yeah. was a standard thing. Right. Uh, Walla Walla used to do that at one point. And on we Fridays. were accepting it. Yeah. And not, not anymore. Because, you know, a lot of, there are a lot more bars with live music. Right. And a lot of them, uh, for example, in the very highly populated areas may not need to charge cover charge. I don't know what the reason might be, but what it has make, made it um, so for the audience, the expectations mm-hmm. is to go to a place and not pay uh, for cover charge. Right. So that hasn't really helped. Um, but in, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that uh, it's, it remains very challenging for anyone who has live bands. Right. Um, for our part, when we do what we do at, at, at Timber and so at Blackbird, is that we try to feature all these bands that we can. Uh, Supersonics 1, 53A right. is another one. Right. A lot of these bands, the vibes right. uh, with us. Rafi Ali, the mm-hmm. football Footballer, player. Yeah, yeah he's drums. with us too. And yeah. we try to support them. Mm. But we can't just stay stagnant. So what we do is we try to have events in in um internal events. We even have tribute nights. Right. So for example, uh, Af1 and the Vibes were in, were were doing a eighties um eighties and nineties rock tribute. Right. So we do that. We say, hey, can you do a tribute? And okay. then we try to attract new crowd to come right. in. So we have to make really a lot of effort. Yeah. To have. And recently we'd had the Beatles tribute right. with the Day Trippers. Right. And that was really well received. You know, right. Beatles line. Yeah, know. I mean, of course you can't go wrong. But all the songs you This is what I mean. But the point is also <laughs> is that the other places, other venues can also take a leaf out of your playbook, out of Timber's playbook, mm-hmm. you know, and do the same. It's about work. It's about putting in the work, like what you just said, you know, we, we can have this going on. We can have retro night going on. We can, yeah. have, we can plan all the promos and we can do all that. What I'm trying to say here is that, first of all, I'm quite stunned that nobody charges cover charge anymore. Mm-hmm. Maybe because I'm such a good boy, I don't go out and booze him very much. <laughs> you know, invite, last couple of years. You soon. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I need to get a life. Okay. <laughs> and at the same time, you know, not understanding that bands have to be paid. Some people don't understand. Some people do. Uh, I'm not saying all of them don't. 
but there's one more point I I have to put out. Um, you know, um, you know, I I, I spent three years in Australia. <laughs> uh, you know, you must understand an Asian musician right. in, in in a room packed with white white people. people. Mostly, mm-hmm. uh, you have to kind of sort of be more self-aware right. of where you are. Right. Sometimes I play in biker bar, bar, bars, you know, mm-hmm. gangs, you know, bikers in Australia, basically the gangs. Yeah, not, I, not exactly I, Wicked Wallet, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I played in a, I, I escort blues festival and I was stunned. I went, I went in, I didn't, I, I couldn't believe how many Harleys they were there and there was how many bikes were there and it was about maybe 3,000 bikers. Right. And, you know, I looked like a poly student at that time, you know, just come out of poly glasses, you know. <laughs> but, but, you know, we have to be just a little bit more alert, right? But more importantly, we have to, we, I had to market myself, do mm-hmm. my own poster, mm-hmm. sell my own tickets, mm-hmm. do my own uh, PR. Mm-hmm. I, we couldn't afford any of those. Right. We had to do everything. And that's the thing about Australia. You know, most bands in Australia will buy a station wagon. Right. You know why? Mm-hmm. They can put their equipment. Equipment in. When mm-hmm. you go to a venue, none of the venues provide a backline. Right. You have to, you know, set, up on your set own. it up on your own. Yeah. You, yeah. And none of them are, have a sound engineer. Yeah. Some of them will have, most of them don't. Yeah, it sounds like and fun, And then you're going to do everything. Sounds like fun, man. It's great. It's great, <laughs> but nobody told me. <laughs> Singapore, you know, everything's provided. So, you, but Danny, along the same vein, man, I mean, I'm, I'm, I didn't do anything in Australia. Okay? I, I, you know, I'm a BTC. You know the BTC? No. Okay. And, <laughs> and <laughs> really, it's true. And when we, when we started doing these things, right, I was 16 years old moving forward. And I get, got behind a microphone, right? Yeah. And then uh, started singing, hosting, blah, blah, blah. Now, what we used to do, same thing. Van. Rent the freaking van. Yeah. Equipment, you know? With a T-shaped console and all that, you know, the Mark II turntables, racks and racks mm. of records and speakers, man, they were bigger than you, mm, mm, right? The PVs, the SP2s, you know? The home parties. Oh, remember fuck that? yeah, exactly. And we <laughs> set it up. That. We set them all know, up, right? With the lights and everything. And then after that, sweating like shit, grab a towel, wipe down, put on a suit mm. and do the show. I know. Then take it off again, put on another dry T-shirt and tear down. Tear down. But you know exactly. what, man? All this you see in this studio, how do you think I know how to set up? Yeah. It's because of those years. Yeah. And it were great yeah. because we started to value ourselves, man. Mm-hmm. We started to value, we understood our value. Mm-hmm. Back then we get paid 150 bucks, sure. But as we got older and we got more commercially mature and we look back, guys like me, and we go, you know what? Bloody hell, you pay me what I'm worth, man, because this is what I know and this is what I can do, you know? So I think what you went through, similar, almost similar to what we went through. Same, same thing. Yeah. We had to set up everything. Yeah, exactly. Own. And and that and made us see value. And including the muses came before us. They know their value, man. Yeah, yeah. Right. You spoke about Hang Loose, uh, you know, Iskanda, right? Iskanda, yeah, the late, my, great my, my bass player from U Blues to now Raw Earth, mm-hmm. uh, he's a bass player for Iskanda. So mm. I, I, I spent a lot of time talking to the older musicians yeah. like you do. Yeah. And I got so much wisdom from them. Yeah, but, so much. But man. the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, you it's a, a different environment like Australia or even other countries who don't have that kind of comfort, you know, you just go to the venue and everything's provided and we complain about the sound engineer or, <laughs> you know, you don't have that in Australia. And, yeah. and I treasure that. I yeah. really cherish that. I hope, <laughs> I hope that while I talk about audience, I talked about mindsets, you mm-hmm. talked about, you know, um, how people don't pay cover charge anymore, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Um, musicians paid, but the musicians themselves, I think, mm. also may have to just pull up the socks and say, how do I market these gigs? Mm-hmm. How do I do uh, social media promotions? How do I work with the venues? Mm-hmm. Understanding a bit of the business because after COVID, it's not necessarily easier. Sure. Everybody thought yeah. after COVID, yeah. everything's going to be boom down, Charlie. Right. It hasn't happened. You know, with uh, cost increase, inflation, right. uh, everything, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want to go on, but there's a list of things. Yeah. Everything is more expensive. A whole litany of things, yeah. Right? Manpower is more yeah. expensive. Yeah. Harder to get manpower, yeah. even though a lot of places are closing down. Mm. Probably easier now. Mm-hmm. But all these problems have <coughs> come up. So 
it's going to be more challenging and mm. we're going to find a way. That's why Timber Plus One off, or I don't know which one you go. One off. One off. Yeah. It's, it's a business model that we focus now. Mm -hmm. It's not just about a bar, <coughs> a restaurant. It's about food, variety of food, mm -hmm. about variety of drinks. Now that's where the, <laughs> that's where we had to <coughs> pivot. Yeah. Yeah. So based on that business model, it's a lot better for us now, you know. What do you think, coming back, you know, strictly to the point where how society can really grow to understand, respect and value musos and entertainers? How could there be a, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a you. macro, thank you, a macro plan from say an association body, from say the government's perspective on how they can help grow this. So, so I'm part of a few uh, <coughs> charity groups. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm chairman of a SG Muso. You talk about SG Muso. Exactly why well, I actually, asked. Uh, you right know, person for me to ask. Yeah, and and we we were we were quite quiet. Obviously, COVID has hit us hard, mm -hmm. but we we're quite quiet. And now we actually did some pot, 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 I mean, uh, live, live stream uh, grants and sponsorships. But now we are actually waiting for our venue. Right. We have actually a venue coming up um, where it's not a, it's, it's basically a, a space for performance. And as you mentioned just now, you know, it's how do we then get our veteran musicians? Yeah. How do we get our current musicians? How right. do we get say, uh, bands that do the original music? Right. A uh, space for them. Right. Uh, that's what we are, we are working towards. And come April, I think April or May, we will probably have the space mm -hmm. and then gives us a lot of, um, uh, an avenue for opportunities right. to do a veterans night, right. to do, get, you know, a Boniface to come or mm -hmm. do co-organize events with musicians. Right. Right. The, the problem is real estate. You know how expensive Singapore oh, is. Oh, hell yeah. So we want to provide a space whereby it's uh, discount, heavily discounted for them to be able to do shows. Have and you heard about what Tomasic Shop House has been doing? Who? Tomasic Shop House. No. I'm okay. Um, this has been happening, but recently they, they've, they've slowed it down because they're, they've taken over some more units along Dobie God. Mm -hmm. And it's by Tomasic. And Tomasic Shop House has a stage. Not a stage, no. They gave a platform for musos to come in and jam. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, it happened, it, it used to happen every Thursday from 5 p.m. to maybe 9 p.m. Um, I used to be there for a while. And then, of course, I'm not there anymore. Mm -hmm. But they're still going on. Once they've renovated, they've taken over the new space, it's going to come back. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing that they're doing. Yeah, But I think that uh, there's got to be a bigger, louder shout out for this thing. Sure, sure. And, and mindsets take time to change, mm -hmm. uh, you know. You know, we didn't have to change mindsets. But no one's leading the way for that, man. Well, to right. help it's, get society to change mindsets. It's, 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 I, I mean, I've been doing this for a while and I, I agree with you. Mm. It's, we, we don't, we don't exactly have a united voice. Yeah. This, you know, some mm. musicians, you know, have a, their own clique mm. and other musicians have their own clique. Mm -hmm. We don't actually come together. Mm -hmm. and, and for, for a long while, that was my hope for SG Muso. Right. When we first started SG Muso, I told that then uh, chairman, I said, what we need to do is unite people as much as we can. We right. can't change everybody, yeah. but at least we get most of them in. Yeah. And, and, and we have a venue right. that actually is run by musicians, mm -hmm. run for musicians. Mm -hmm. I think we have a, a better hope because if it's not expensive to run an event or a concert, that is a good starting point. Right. You know, you want to do something in an established venue, it's going right. to cost money. Right. But if we're going to say, okay, this is a package, Let's work together. Mm. Let's be partners. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever we make, we we do the split right. fairly, and right. we sell uh, uh, FMB. Right, right. We split, do the split there. Right. Then they understand. Oh, okay. Hey, I, I can do my own event now. Right. I mean, if, even if it's once every three months, mm -hmm. at least it's something to work towards. Mm -hmm. So anyone, like uh, anyone, can just come to us, and we can co-organize this. Right. And then we can raise money for them. You okay. know? So so that's that's all really. And then the good thing about it is that um, because the venue is re reasonably uh, affordable, mm -hmm. and, and and like I said, we are going to announce that quite soon, hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. 
you you it gives it opens up a lot of uh, opportunities for for bands to have a have a voice right and and i i really hope that audiences understand mm. that if they don't put down their investment right what do i mean by that they come down they say you know i i love you guys hey how much is the tickets yeah $25 no problem man right you, if you don't do that yeah. how do you expect to how do yeah. you expect them to be paid yeah, I'm hoping to see what's going to be happening in this couple of a uh, couple of next few weekends or day. I think February, February, if I'm not mistaken, there are a few concerts coming up at the Esplanade, and tickets are on sale, like thirty thirty five bucks, something like that. And uh, I really hope to see a good turnout. You know, for these, uh, you got people like I'm giving them. Free, I'm giving you guys free promo, hey. man. Uh, <laughs> Sean DeMello together with Wayne Sands playing retro. Uh, and then you've got uh, the siblings, Mel and Joe, uh, oh, Ernesto I, I and Greg. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and um, uh, I really, really hope that there's going to be a crowd, really, the people who are willing to pay because I'm, it makes me sick when you pay so much money to watch Taylor Swift. Even on Carousel, and people really hawk these yeah. fucking tickets, right? I mean, Coldplay, well, no disrespect to Coldplay, you know? Uh, and take a look at the turnout, man, at, at the Singapore Stadium, right? I mean, it's wow. Just as much as you two. I was at U2. I was dying to watch U2. It's 30 plus years waiting for these guys to come here. I was there. Oh, awesome, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, um, but our own, our own homegrown talents, young or old, veterans or otherwise, is something that we should support. I want to say this, really. I mean, stop being such fucking numb nuts, man. You know, life is more than just about work and home and kids. Got to get some music into your system. Uh, I, I say it so often and I'll say it again. A nation has lost its music, has lost its soul. And now coming back to that little thing about, oh, you want to be Ben Boyer? <laughs> ah, Chinese, yeah. I know that. Oh, we're, we're just really playing Ben Boy. We Eurasians, man. Hey, Eurasian must be Ben Boy. <laughs> same, for our, same for our Malay brothers and sisters. Same. Similar. You flip the coin, man. Flip the coin over, man. It's another yeah, side yeah. you're looking at. Um, <laughs> we get stereotyped over and over again. Um, but, but how about you? You've got a kid, right? How old yeah. is your kid? Uh, he's uh, 19, 20 months. Yeah. yeah. Come May, he's two. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, Long way I'm to a, go, my friend. I'm a, I'm a, I'm late in the game. <laughs> yeah. but never too late. It's never too blessing. late. It's never, don't worry about. It. I'm a, I'm not that young a dad either. <laughs> uh, my son is coming fifteen. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. Yeah. Wow. Uh, oh, it's, it's been a wonderful I journey. I can't imagine if my, my, my son turns fifteen. <laughs> it's been a wonderful journey. <laughs> I can tell you. And you know something? Now that I'm on that topic, I shared this something with you, and for everyone to listen to and watch and listen to, you know, um. He, he's from my school. Mm. He's in St. Pat's. <laughs> I love, I love St. Pat's. I, I still do. I love St. Pat's so much. And even more now, because you know what they're, they're doing? Um, the music lessons are serious. Yeah. I've met the music teachers. I've worked with them. They're amazing. I've never heard, never seen so much talent. Uh, and voices are so amazing. Blows your mind. Yeah. And I and I don't give out these compliments so easily, let me tell you. But my son, I'm a, I'm the kind of dad that's not gonna be like other crazy parents who are helicopter parent, helicoptering their children, yeah? Um, and oh no, weekends you're gonna go for tuition from tuition, you're gonna go for piano, or you're gonna go for this and that, taekwondo, no, 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 no. You tell me, you go figure out what you want, what you like. And we've been doing that all his life, right? And I'm very glad the way he turned out, to be honest. I didn't put him through anything musical. Yeah. Um, he represent, he represent, represented Singapore last year, mm-hmm. uh, in sport and at mm-hmm. least, you know, and that's great. Right. And it's all on his own. Yeah. So let a guy grow on his own. That's my belief, my wife and I. But musically, nothing, nothing. Okay. When the same pads, the principal promised all of us, all the parents, by the time your son leaves the school, in four years, okay, from secondary one to secondary four, he can play at least two instruments. Mm-hmm. My boy came back one day and said, I gotta be off all made to form bands. Mm-hmm. Five piece. They're all made to hey. form as part of your assignment, yeah? And then they have to play two songs. So first one they've already accomplished. Uh, uh beat it. 
Michael Jackson, right? And he started playing bass. Mm. And I went, you what? Yeah, yeah, I played bass. Mm. <laughs> How? <laughs> the school taught. Mm. It's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Then they have hip hop class. If even though that is elective, okay, hip hop. And right now they're, they're 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 considering still myself, my good old, good old buddy, old friend of mine, Glenn Ong, and together with Andre Huden, go over and teach media, mm-hmm. and you know for me voice, right, mm-hmm. broadcast, blah blah blah. And so the school, there's one school in my old school that's still doing what it can to make sure that this country and we can still produce moving forward new musos, entertainers, media personalities. You know what I mean? And I think that's great because there is no, there is no, oh, you know, I don't want, many we are school, it's all about academics. It's, that's, I think it's wonderful. There's one school that's playing its part. And I think it should spread across the board. Yes. Um, we, we're actually working with MOE on this one. Oh, I have really? a, I have a, a music academy. A yeah, yeah. Music academy. that one I know. Yeah, it's part of the ecosystem of what we do, and uh, we are working with MOE on a new uh, sort of uh, direction. Mm. And you are right. If every school offers this yeah. for all students, yeah, then the mindsets can change. We yeah. believe in the next generation, and mm-hmm. the next generation it has to start now. Yeah. So, so you are right. I, I mean, for me, that's what I've been telling them. It has to be a standardized, somewhat standardized. Uh, syllabus, right? Yep, yep. But more focus on band right. and instruments, right. like your, your, like your, your kid. Yeah, you know, playing beat it or yep. even even local music, yep. even local songs, even right. regional songs. Right. You know, um, I've done uh about three concerts for Filipino bands. Mm. Uh, we sold out everyone, almost right. every one of them. We sold seven hundred tickets. Wow. At fifty dollars and eighty dollars. Wow. Eighty dollars is a meet and greet, and we do it at Timber Plus One North. Right. We have we have one coming up uh, in uh, I believe it was uh, April. I, I'm not wrong, and like I said, you just look at the Filipinos. They are so proud of their artists, right. so proud of their bands. They are, yeah. They know every word to the songs. Yeah, we yeah. could do the same, but it will take some time. Yeah, but it starts from the school. It starts from your school. Your kid is a great example. Starts from the school is one thing, my my friend, but I think the biggest influence is the home. Sure. Why? A couple of years ago, I was asked to give the primary sixes of a, my old primary school. And something happened in front of my eyes. 12-year-old boys, yeah. There's a Filipino boy and our local boys around him. And of course, I was covering stuff like, okay, emceeing, you know, voice artists, blah, blah, blah. And this so I asked the small group, they're all coming in groups. So I asked the small, this particular group, um, any one of you here play an instrument, a musical instrument? So this Filipino boy put up and said, yeah, I do. I play the guitar. Mm-hmm. Then after that, uh, the other kid, which is this local boy, asked me, how much money can you guys make? Hmm. I said, wow, that's the first question that comes out of your mouth, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because my parents always say that that uh, don't do something that doesn't pay you much. <laughs> and this kid said, um, 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 I asked him, I asked the other boy, ignore this kid. I said, ah, no point, pointless. So I asked this, the Filipino boy, so what's, what are you going to do when you, if you thought about what you want to do when you grow up? His answer to me was, I want to be a carpenter. And that drew laughter from all of our local oh, no. children. And I asked them, why are you guys laughing? Oh. And they, and they, they looked at him, one of the, the same boy that asked me about the money thing, said this to the, said, told this boy, this Filipino boy, you can't make money as a carpenter. It's stupid. Oh. Oh. And so, you know, Danny, MOE can do whatever it wants. Great. I mean, I applaud them. You got, you guys helping each other out for this. Great. But it is still the mindsets of the Singapore household yeah. that has got to change. Sure. So this is what I mean. I, I, I From a macro, macro scale, man, how can we drive this into the homes that please, musicians, you think it's easy doing this? Mm. But it's because they love this, they're good at it, and they, they want to grow that craft. Uh, let, let me let me just, uh, let me address this a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I think you're absolutely right. 
that the, it starts from the home. Yeah. So, you know, I'm also involved with Respect SG. I don't know if you read about that. I can send it more dif- information to you. What we have done mm. is we work with RI, I mean, you know, Raffles, mm. and also other schools, including very soon, hopefully, St. Pets, uh, where 16-year-old kids uh, from Sec 4 students and Sec 3 students right. get to work in FNB. Now, why do I bring this up? Mm. It all comes from being humble. Yep. You know, the, 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 the kids that laugh at this this boy? Yep. That's terrible. Yep. Terrible. I mean, I, I like to remind people that Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I better go and get for seek forgiveness. <laughs> Precisely. You know what I mean? But you're so right. Don't, I mean, don't, don't, don't laugh at someone. Yeah. But, but my point is this. Uh, the RI kids have been working with us for seven years. Right. Every single one of them that went to work with us and do three weeks of working in the kitchen and service, they wrote things that they, I can't believe it. I can't believe how humbling this is. I can't believe how difficult it is a job to serve someone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you see, me and you, yeah. when we were 17, 18, we were looking for our first job. Yeah. I was a waiter. Yeah. I worked as a waiter. I worked as a 7 Eleven. I was working in 7 Eleven, uh, funny enough, near Holy Family. <laughs> okay. The one that is near the Holy Family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and the I one know. at night where people come with, I uh, don't know who, from KTVs. Yeah. And that's the one I worked at. I worked yeah, yeah, the midnight yeah. shift. Okay. Because it paid more. Yeah. I, I worked as a census of, I always worked. Yeah. But you see, if young kids are protected in their homes, yeah. don't work, stay at home, yeah. study your math. Right. And they don't get to work outside and right. talk to other people. Right. Oh, that that's not a good future. Yep. Because eventually EQ has mm. to be as as important too. Well, you know, we've been talking for almost an hour and a half. <laughs> so on that note, Danny, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end the show with just two things, okay? Just two more things. One. If recently you heard of Glassdoor, right? Ooh. Online, there's a portal called Glassdoor. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, and when true. people bitch and whinge about Glassdoor. their employers and stuff like that, I I, I unfortunately saw some on Reddit. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and and these people were saying, these were like excerpts from the Glassdoor. Oh, uh, uh, what's the, wor- the, the tagline was this, okay? Or rather the topic was, what's the worst industry or sector to work in? Mm. And I tell you, I'm just going to sum it up mm. in a nutshell. Mm. F&B, stand too long mm. and you've got to serve idiots. Accountancy. Uh, uh, accountancy. What was the bitch about, bitching about accountancy? Hmm. Uh, I think it was hours, mm. a lot of hours spent, right? Sitting at the table. So sit too long. Mm. <laughs> stand too long. Uh, stand too long. too long. Sit too long. Okay. Um, oh gosh. Oh, Oh, I'm not going to mention the organization. They mentioned the organization's name, but it is a stat board, uh-huh. right? Uh, and it involves in engineering, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Uh, you know what I mean, huh? And, oh, uh, so many people stay there for so many years, for so long to suffer. I'm I'm not going to stay there for long anymore. I'm not going to be as silly as these boomers. Okay? Uh, and then plus, unceremoniously, they can just let you go, which they have done. So why should I stay there? Right. Oh, and then the 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 uh, customer service. Oh my goodness, retail, retail as well, retail. Uh, uh, uh in 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 a department store, right? Um, because why we're dealing with entitled Singaporeans. So you know what? You're gonna list a whole finance, finance as well. Okay, you're gonna list down everything. You're gonna run out of jobs. Yeah. You're gonna run out of jo- you're gonna run out of jobs, man. And it's like, what do you want? Mm. Too far, too low. Too long, too short. What? Mm. Then what do you want? It's a sad. It's a sad situation. It is, mm. right? And we are pandering to them. Let me tell you something. This cover charge bullshit. Mm. If I can find out which idiot started that, mm. I'll probably. Mm. Mm. I'm not gonna go that far. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Stupid. Someone must have started that trend. And then when you start that, people start losing work. Well, I mean, I mean, most people don't charge cover charge, but I think what I'm trying to say is that then how do you put the value back to the musicians? Exactly. But it's a question that we are still grappling with, you know, and I... I, I oh, come yeah. on, Danny. You and I both know, man. The problem here, it would be landlords. I mm. say that all so often. It's the landlords, man. If they don't charge that much, make a profit by all means, right? And don't get greedy. 
everyone can. It's just going to be equitable for everyone, right? There's nobody's talking about that anymore. You know, having to be, you know, businesses to be equitable. You make your money, I make my money, and we're all going to be happy. It's hard to find good landlords, but you're right. I mean, the, the, we, we've got some good ones and we have to start negotiating with some, you know, more more challenging ones. But but there's there's a lot of things in play here. But I, I think coming back to what you said about your, the, this list of jobs that people don't want to do. Yeah. I have not regretted one day of being a musician and in FMB. At the end of the day, it makes me really happy. And what, you know what makes me truly happy? Yeah. To be able to see a young band that we've, taken in like supersonic or even 53A when they first started yeah. and putting them on stage. You know why? I feel proud when they're on stage and they have a microphone and right. they're making a joke. They're yeah. making banter yeah. with the crowd. Yeah. You know, That's what makes Singapore great. Yeah, Because without entertainment, without live music yeah. scene, without musicians, young people who are confident, then we are quite, we are, we are, we are, we are competing with some really dynamic countries out there. Yeah. Right, so the arts and culture and entertainment, I like to include that in, is part of our, uh, you know, identity. Right, and we should be very careful because what is happening in Bangkok, what is happening elsewhere, where entertainment is top notch. Yeah, Japan, Japan. Yeah, you know, when people go there for clubs and the DJs are still working. Right, and then you look at Singapore, when one of our main things is tourism. Yeah, and if we don't focus on the content, how right. do you expect? People don't want to come here and have fun. Yeah, so just, I think it's, it just can't be MBS, man. Come on. It can't, yeah, it can't just be one or few things. It has to be a lot of things. People need to come here and say, you know, I went to this place. It's amazing. This yeah, place, yeah. Musicians like are Zook. Great. Zook built this name. Exactly. Right? Yeah. As, exactly. Including the exactly. old Elvis. Exactly. The old Elvis in Concourse, they were in Duxton. Exactly. Right? Is Elvis Singapore, man? You know? No, even Boat Key in Circular Road. Yeah, even, yeah, yeah. Even, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Boogies. Yeah, Remember yeah. Boogies when he was yeah, puzzling. Yeah. Boom, boom, room. Yeah, boom, boom, room. Yeah. You know, all those places. Yeah. Hard Rock Cafe in the heydays. Yeah. Oh, where, where, my. Where Reggae, you know, oh, Sundays. Oh, man. I was there. There was even so, before Jive Talking came on, man. It was hot, man. China Jump. Yeah, yeah China then? Jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Palm Room. Yeah. I think the era ended kind of round about there. And yeah. now, how do we rebuild it? You say it's for, it starts from home. Yeah. It starts from people respecting other people. Yeah. Come on. People are happy doing the work. Yeah. Who are you to judge? Yeah. If they're happy being musicians, carpenter, right. FMB, right. who are you to judge? Last question. Right. If your son comes to you and says, Daddy, I'm going to be a muso. Yeah. What would you say? I would say go, go for, I mean, I can't say it. Very hard for me to say, no, don't do it. Very hard. You know, and, uh, you know I, I would say go for it. But what I will do yeah. as a responsible parent, yeah. as I'm sure you would do, is to go through with them the challenges that they might face yeah. and, and what they might have to do, yeah. pull up their socks yeah. and understand it's not going to be easy. Okay. That's what I would do. Okay. But will I ever stop him? No way. No mm. way. Awesome. In, to end this program, to, program, fuck that. This is not, <laughs> this is not channel. Okay, now I'm not going to go there. Um, to end the show, we plucked this thing out and just to showcase Danny Lung in action with a band. And this was during the pandemic oh, period. Oh, wow, I remember this. And you guys got together, right? You got your bands come together. You did something via Zoom. Yeah, this right. is my friend from uh, Jakarta. I just jammed to him last week. Is that right? My, I got to say, man, when I listened to them, the singers, yeah. and I don't, my gosh, mind-blowing. Thanks, bro. Bloody brilliant. Konko and Suraf got free. <laughs> uh, and by the way, Suraf is the my partner at Blackbird. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just go check him out, you know. No, I'm going to go. Marriage. I'm going to come yeah, down to Blackbird. Please, no, I'm going to invite you. Gonna, please, please, please oh, do. Oh. I would really love to come and listen to the music, man. Really. is Because uh, this blew me away and I just couldn't believe that it's done like this, you know, by via Zoom. Uh, you know, I've had friends who've done that too. You know, Stephen Francis and the rest of his friends. Amazing stuff. Yeah. This is also damn good, man. Yeah. And that's Danny Long, people. Behind the sixth string. Uh, enjoy the video. We're going to end the show. Hey, Kai, play the whole damn thing, will you? And here we go. And thank you, Danny. Thank you, brother. Okay. <laughs>